If you've been around the Xamarin world for a while, then you know that at some point, you need to write some platform-specific code. It can be hard, and you may be wondering how do you use this platform-specific code from a shared net standard library. In this video, we'll take a look at the iPlatform Initializer and how you can use it to inject platform-specific services into your code base with Prism. We'll be using Xamarin Essentials and the Xamarin Essentials Interfaces NuGet to ensure that we maintain the maximum in testability and code reuse. This video is brought to you by my GitHub sponsors. To see more from the mobile build tools, Prism Library, and Prism plugins, or to see more Twitch streams and YouTube tutorials, be sure to sign up as a GitHub sponsor at zam.dev slash sponsordan. Let's start by looking at a sample app here. We'll see that we have a very simple page in which we just have a simple button to launch docs. What we want to do is open a browser window to see the docs on how to use platform specific services within our app. We'll see here that we have a simple button on our page. When we click it though, it doesn't do anything. Now let's take a look at our view model. Looking at the view model, we have a simple string with the URL that we want to see and a command where we can do something, but we actually don't have anything implemented yet. So let's go ahead and implement something. We've already installed Xamarin Essentials. I can add the Xamarin Essentials namespace here, and I can go down to my method and add browser.openAsync to open the browser like we want. The problem is Xamarin Essentials is a cross-compiled library. Because of this, if I go to run any unit tests, it will fail since it doesn't actually have an implementation for net core app or for net standard. What I really need in order to keep my code testable is something like an iBrowser. If I could just use an iBrowser interface, it would solve all my problems. Luckily, Ryan Davis has already given us the Xamarin Essentials Interfaces NuGet package, which is also installed here. As you can see, I can add the Xamarin Essentials Interfaces namespace, and now I can use the iBrowser interface. By using the iBrowser interface and injecting it into my view model's constructor, I can ensure that my view model remains testable. So even when I go to run unit tests, I can mock out the iBrowser to ensure that I have proper code coverage. I can now simply call the browser open async and pass in my docs URL to open the browser when this uh, command is executed. Of course, now that we've added the iBrowser interface, we've created a new dependency, which we need to ensure is registered. Of course, we could come in here to the app register types method and add the iBrowser and browser implementation here. This might work in the case of Xamarin Essentials interfaces, but for much of your code in which you're actually supplying the browser implementation at the actual platform level, this wouldn't work. So what do we need to do to ensure that this will work for your platform specific services? All we really need to do is create a platform initializer within our platform project and implement the iPlatform initializer interface. As you can see, we get the same register types with the iContainer registry that we're used to in our Prism application. The same line where we add container registry dot register with our iBrowser and browser implementation can simply now live here in the platform level. Of course, we now need to pass in the platform initializer into our application which we can simply do here in the constructor of our app. Of course, we also need to update our app's constructor. As you can see in our sample here, we're just using a default constructor. But Prism application actually has an overloaded constructor, which includes one with an iPlatform initializer. By passing in the iPlatform initializer into our application and then down into the Prism application, we can ensure that our platform specific services get registered for our application. Now we're ready to go ahead and run our sample one more time. Again, 
the app doesn't look fancy, but when we go ahead and click the button, we'll expect something to happen because everything has been wired up. And there we have it. We have a fresh browser native to the platform with the Prism documentation on using iPlatform Initializer, exactly like we expected. Hey, Dan here. Hope you enjoyed another wonderful episode. Be sure to hit subscribe and like so I can keep bringing you even more great content.